Don't forget, Oak Tree Funding is here to help you with all of your non-QM needs in 2021 and beyond. And you're gonna need some help because let me tell you, business is gonna slow down on the refi side. Get that non-QM business going. Supplement that stuff. Click the banner you see right here on your screen, just right below the video on a non-QM, and an Oak Tree rep will get a hold of you and get you trained, your team trained, your whole office trained, and you get some more business in the door today. Uh, we haven't talked about this on our show, and we won't because it really doesn't matter that much, but Fannie Mae just came out with their annual earnings reports from from last year. 70%, a whole 70% of their business was refinances. For Fannie Mae, a trillion dollar business, 70% refinances. Trust me guys, you need companies like Oak Tree right now. 2021 is going to be a drastically different year, as we're already finding out. On with our show, this is a very interesting show today. Stick with me and see what you guys think because we're looking for input from you. But here's my question. If housing is so strong, as everybody says, and for good reason, I get it. Values are up everywhere. There's bidding wars in so many markets. 40,000 over asking price, 60,000 over asking price. You know, open houses with lines around the corner. Cops directing traffic for these open houses. Not sure if I believe that one, but you get the idea. If housing is so incredibly strong right now, then why, oh why are we extending our national forbearance policies? If housing is so strong, the only problem is I can't make my damn payment. How is this possible? How do we reconcile these two points? Federally backed mortgages, or about 70% of borrowers, are eligible for the additional forbearances and protections from foreclosure. Specifically, if you have a home loan through the Federal Housing Authority. FHA. <laughs> The U.S. Department of Agriculture, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, or the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, you can enroll in a forbearance until June 30th of this year. If you have a mortgage from Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, you can also delay your payments. So that's all your Fannie, Freddie, Jenny loans. You know all the loans that everybody writes. That means somebody can theoretically not make their payment for a full year and a half. Here's my thinking. Tell me why I'm wrong. If you can't make your payment for the past year and a half, there's a good chance you probably won't be able to make that payment ever, period. That means the owner of your note is paying for you to live free of charge for that full year and a half before they can even consider evicting you via foreclosure, if that's what it takes. Which means add another year for that foreclosure and eviction and all the associated costs that go along with it. So so why is this an issue? Our forbearance policies compromise the value and integrity of mortgage-backed securities. So question, why would anybody currently invest in mortgage-backed securities if they don't have a belief that payments are going to be made? As we sit, the bulk of all mortgage loans are being purchased by the federal government, primarily through the Treasury. It, think I'm wrong? Check this out. Now this is from the St. Louis Fed and it shows the $1.36 trillion of mortgage-backed securities on the books of the federal government. Now what's worth noting, check out the mortgage-backed securities on the books prior to 2008. Look at that. You might note the number that was purchased was zero. Zilch. Nada. Now, well, as we said before, if you have a home loan, you're living in government housing because chances are they own that note. And our policy with forbearances, which is like 18 months with no payment, is getting us further away from an infusion of private capital, not closer. That's why we're looking at what's referred to the utility model for the GSEs. That's basically being the GSEs and the vast majority of mortgages in our country are permanently held with the GSEs and the federal government which may or may not be a bad thing. It might or might not be, and that's because the government has crowded out the private sector, the secondary market was overwhelmingly created by the government, and consequently, the market developed to take advantage of the government role and support. The entire trading of mortgage-backed securities and the pricing of it that underlies relatively inexpensive mortgage rates depends upon the government support so that mortgage-backed securities can be pure interest rate risk securities while the credit risk is managed separately. The secondary mortgage market was never dominated by the private sector, so why should anybody expect it to be in the future? The utility model is the only one that seems likely to work properly. It reflects the government's historical role in the secondary market, and it pragmatically solves the problems of that market in a relatively low-risk fashion and allows for arbitrary moves like allowing folks not to make their mortgage payments for a year and a half without risking massive shifts in the market and rates that would 
happen if the private sector was allowed a bigger role in mortgage-backed securities. Now, if you have any thoughts on the utility model for the GSEs, pro or con, leave us your comments and your thoughts down below. We're very interested to hear what you guys think of this. Do us a favor, forward, share, subscribe, put it on Facebook, talk to us, tell us something. We'll see you later, bye.